And we're back. If you guys have missed the last videos, then you need to go catch up. We've got Matt's flat bed up to cabinet powder trim coatings getting done. We've got all the body work done, and now here we are. We've got the parts, we've got the pieces, and we are ready to get everything prepped out, get it ready for paint. I'm gonna be painting it. Hillbilly's gonna be prepping out some of the stuff on the parts. He's also got a 50 gallon oversized tank to install for Matt. I know, some of you think that's probably a waste of time because he doesn't fill up, but what it does mean is that Hefe can put 50 gallons of fuel and Matt can run that out until his heart's content and he runs out. And then Hefe can fill it back up. Got a few cool things going on. Oh, we've also got a radio. We're putting our, we're putting a new touch screen radio in for Matt. Yeah, that's gonna be exciting. Let's get to work. We've got a lot of stuff to do, but we're gonna first start out by, you know, ripping it off like a band-aid, getting all the masking off. Like every day, I've got swimming lessons to take my kids to. So I'm gonna take off here in a minute. Hillbilly's gonna finish getting this unmasked and he's gonna start prepping out all the blue with 800 grit. I'm gonna be prepping all the primer, getting it all ready. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna blend this hood. So we wanna prep this out in 800, this will be prepped out in 600, and we'll show you guys in the booth as soon as it's all prepped. Actually, we've only got two parts to paint. We got a hood and a fender. But as long as we can get them painted, get them baked off, reassemble them, the truck's gonna come together very, very nicely. Still doing a lot of sanding. I end up doing that a lot. This is my first time ever prepping for a blend, so it's kind of hard. I've already burned through in a couple spots. But what do you do when you're just beginner at it? I'll show you guys something. So I've got some 320 on my block. I'm gonna block this out, but I'm gonna stay within the primer. All I wanna do is cut this primer down so that it's easier to 600. Like I've said 150,000 times before, all we're trying to do is delete our scratches. So while I'm doing this, Hillbilly is bringing blue steel back in and he's gonna start working on that tank. So I'll finish blocking this out and I'll show you guys when I wet sand it. This is gonna be fun. There's a half a tank still. I gotta drop the gas tank because we're putting the new, bigger gas or fuel tank in there. How Robbie was saying, Matt's always running out, but Robbie runs out just as much. And so it's half full. That's gonna be heavy and awkward, unless I can find somewhere to put about 10 gallons of fuel somewhere. First things first, gotta remove the filler hose and the vent tube. These little screwdrivers that we got are pretty nifty, but Robbie lost his. I did not lose it, you lost it. If I lost it, then why do I still have mine? You lost mine, not yours. No, 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 you're always asking to use mine and my crescent wrench because you lost yours. <sighs> you lost mine and then you stole, well, actually you lost yours and then you stole mine and you blamed it on me and you know, I this get it. This is green. That's fine. That is not green. I understand. So I've just about got everything blocked out on this hood. Once I get it blocked, I have to guide coat it. And the guide coat is used so that I can see where my scratches are. This is gonna cut all the imperfections, get everything straight and flat. And then all the 600 is, is to remove the 320 scratching. So I'll be done with this here in a little bit. And then once this is all prepped out, we gotta clean it, get it masked up, and we're painting it today. Cause we gotta get this truck done as soon as possible. Basically, as soon as the bed is finished, it's coming back and we're installing it. So I wanna have all the repair work done and ready waiting. So I get the fuel door pulled off for Kevin because he's going to color match it and he can't color match it without having any kind of color to go off of. So we're sending him the door. Now I got to grab the, go, go back inside, grab the safety chains or the safety hooks for the fifth wheel. So Kevin can drill them in play and put them in place. We've got it all blocked. Now I'm going to guide coat this again. And then I'm gonna start wet sanding it, and then I'll DA the outside. So we'll show you that here in a bit. Hillbilly's working on the tank. I think he's getting the truck lifted. And then we have a special guest here. He's in the shadows. 
Hey guys. You may recognize him from Summit Racing's YouTube channel. That's Justin. He helped us on the 57. He actually like did so much of it. Wasn't just helping. He was like the main contributor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, it was, a, it was a group effort and you know, we succeeded and we're That's about right. to do some more fun stuff So, 57. You guys, you guys are gonna wanna check this out. We're gonna be heading to Reno to hot August nights. We're gonna be road tripping it. So, oh, yes. should be a good time. So he's here hanging out, helping out today. Gonna make things go by smooth. I got the lift set. I'm gonna lift the truck up because I gotta get the skid plate dropped off first and then work on getting the fuel tank out. <laughs> so as I'm sanding, you can see all I'm doing is using my eraser and removing the scratches. Just gonna go through, hit those scratches lightly, get them all gone, and this will be ready for paint. It's stable. Hey, we have a lift certified person here. His name is Justin. Hey, lift certified guy, is that good? Perfect. You wanna give us our give our give us our lift certification? I got the tools, ready to start pulling the skid plate. I think the skid plate's been dropped before. A couple of bolts were already loose. What? No way. Yes way. Do you want to try the old uh, hook the air hose up trick and see if you can expand that one? I mean, don't tempt me. Because once the Titan tank's in, it's a no-go, it's plastic. I'm always down for a good time. You will not be able to expand on it. I like how they have the handle on the bottom side of the tank. And then I'll get a little transmission lift and lift it out. I'm gonna say right there. Just sand your life away. Sanding, 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 sanding. There's a lot of dirt build up on this plug. Got the safety clip out. Ready? Yep. Are you gonna blow it up? Blow it off. Mmm, <laughs> covered in heat pot, dude. Love to see it. Can't wash your clothes now. You gotta hang them on the wall. First time working in Utah. Glorious. This tool is to pull filler neck lock rings off yeah so everyone uses a different one and you know matco is really cool when they came out with this and this is kind of a end all be all tool so you can do both you don't have to own two different tools and it's a it's a slick deal like, you don't have I, to have a, punt, a chisel and a hammer yeah that's the worst part is like when you're putting a fuel pump or something like something that deal is destroying these rings if you're like us and you're doing it at eight o'clock at night and you have to drive it back to work the next day and then you destroy the fuel pump ring it really rains on your parade so this preserved it and this one's still really nice you got tank might have to use a chisel and hammer on this one <laughs> um yeah get a bigger ratchet that was violent. <laughs> that was very violent. Is that broke? I hope not, but it went poof. So. That'll be fine. Noise, it does not sound good. <laughs> then I go grab vacuum. Yeah. Gotta vacuum stuff out of uh, the debris out of the tank. Cause right here it says, notice before installing, be sure to thoroughly inspect inside of the tank. That's quite <laughs> a bit larger. You can see the difference that an extra 30 gallons. Look at that. Oh, wow. All right, now that I've got the hood all sanded and the fender, all I gotta do now is wet scuff it. What that is, is I use sanding paste with gray scotch Bright, and I go through and I just sand scuff everything, just down in all the little shinies, and just make sure that we're gonna have good adhere adherence. Just make sure that we're gonna have good adherence to the paint, and nothing's gonna fail. Get a little bit of water, get your, it's almost like soap. So I like to get it going, and then I work in sections because my brain is screwed up. So I pick a section and I do all the edges and all the flat surfaces, and then I move on rather than just doing it all because that's what normal people do. Anyway, I'll hurry and get this all scuffed, pasted. We'll do the hood. We got to wash it off and it's going to drip dry while we go to lunch. Right after lunch, we paint. All right, so we got Justin running the hose. We're gonna hurry and just wash the fender and hood off in a beautiful little montage of washing.
So we've got it all washed. We're gonna let it drip dry. Hillbilly's gonna head home, grab some lunch, and then he's on his way to American Fork Ford to go pick up a new fuel line, fill a fuel pressure line clip. Luckily they have one in stock. And then he's gonna come back. We'll work on the tank some more after lunch. I'm coming back to get this stuff all painted. So we just got back from lunch and Cody and Justin are putting the fender in the hood in the paint booth. So let's go check out what they're doing. So excited, can't wait to learn. Okay, like when we're doing the hood, uh, like with these squirter holes, we always put a piece of tape from the backside. Okay. Because when we do it, we're gonna put paper, because you know, you can see how dirty it is under here. We don't want to know none of that, like the oil, the dirt, or anything blowing back up underneath the hood. Because a diesel, it takes you, it's impossible to clean the underside of the hood. You didn't come out here to work, did you? Oh, I did. Did you? Yep. Sweet. Well, that works, man, because we're going to make you work. So I love it. But yeah, let's come through, put a couple pieces on the back side. Then this one, where we're in the downdraft boot, we ain't got to like wrap it like a present. We can hang the 18 straight down off the sides and it'll be fine. Okay. But if you're in a cross draft booth, like see ours sucks the air out through the floor. If you're in a cross draft where it pulls it out up at the front and that, you know, your inlet's from the back, then you usually wrap stuff like a Christmas present. Just grab it, take this edge, and you always come back just a little bit. So here's this where, you know, Robbie just usually does, you know, we just scuff the edge. We don't go clear under on stuff like this. You'll do a back mask like this to where it stops it. And then you just take 18 and put on and drop down. You know, so yeah, you can just go through, do that, keep it, you know, about an eighth of an inch back. We're painting stuff, guys. Well, not really. We're doing stuff to, you know, get ready to paint. But I'm learning all sorts of fun things. This is not my uh, wheelhouse. He's going to wax and grease the hood and the fender. <laughs> oh, that's what this is called. You know, yeah. Wax and grease. Wax remember. and grease, pre-cleaner. When we do this, gloves, man. When you oh. put gloves on, you are going to help. But do this so we don't transfer the oils off our hands or wherever else we've got on there. I've seen actual fingerprints end up from like where someone's blended the silver and the metallics hit it just right. I've seen fingerprints in paint jobs. I'm not saying I haven't done it. But we're not doing I'm, it I'm, today. I'm not admitting to doing it. Ready to go. Just go through and just come through and saturate the panel and just wipe it off. And you'll do a couple passes to wipe it, get it all completely dried off. Okay, now we'll hit the fender. All right, it is show time. Yeah, just had to make sure I could see through it. So I've got everything blow tack and static. I've got it etched, it's waited 15 minutes. We're gonna go in and get some sealer put on this. Sealer's gotta sit for 10 to 15 minutes. We're gonna be mixing up some base coat, going in and blending this thing out. So let's get in there. Blue still is gonna look awesome again. Wanna make sure I got good coverage. Nice. Looking perfect. All right, I've got it all sealed up. We're gonna let that sit. Go mix up the base and we'll be back in. All right, so we've got this all mixed up. We're gonna shake it, get in there, blow tack and static, and get some base coat down. It is time, we're gonna blow tack and static. You guys have been waiting so long to hear that. We're gonna blow tack and static it, clear base it, That is blow tack and static. We're gonna clear base it, blend it, let it sit, blend it some more. All right, we're gonna get it clear base.
All right, so we got our first coat of base down. We're gonna let this flash off for eight minutes. Come back in, get a second coat, control that, and then show you guys what it looks like. See if I can get this in without breaking it. What is it? The new clip. It's in, but it doesn't feel right. What do you think? Um, there's like no give to it. Oh, now you just locked it. Gosh dang it. I guess luckily why we have two. Yeah. Did you get two? They gave me two, so I think Robbie ordered two. Oh, we're good. We're good. I'm out. I got the tank while you were gone. I cleaned the fuel ring up. I wiped the tank out some more. So we just need to throw that on the pump, lock the ring. Um, we don't have to put that barb in because there's no auxiliary tank. That's that barb is like if you had a bed, in bed tank, that kind of deal. So you take that out. Yeah, and feed it in through there. Yeah, so let's figure out how it came out of the old. Or maybe it was like that. I don't know. Well, let's look at the old tank and we'll figure it out. Tab location. Is that what it says? If I, if I was to read, it says tab location. I'm so glad they took you to reading school. Look at that sweet new orange O-ring. That is real shiny like. Okay, so we got our O-ring on. Oh yeah, duh, because it's spring loaded. <laughs> I'm like, why won't it go down? Now I'll see if we can put this on without a big violent pop. Yeah, let's... I mean, I like violence, but let's try to not be violent with this. It's not ours. That's on. Okay, yeah, now it's locked. As like when your dad puts ratchet straps on his trailer, that hussy ain't going anywhere. Oh. So Justin found the instructions online and one of the brackets bolts to the body mount bolt. I'm gonna pull it out. <laughs> And then you put the bolt in. So you put the bolt in, then you put the fender washer on top of it so it doesn't smash the rubber bushing. And then screw it back in place. I'm just gonna snug it up. I'm not gonna tighten it because there is side to side play. We wanna be able to get everything mounted before. I go ahead and tighten that up. Got the rear strap semi installed. So now we can just take the tank, slide it in hook up everything, lift it up, and put the front strap on. Extremely convenient with no fuel in this thing. Yeah. How light one of these are. <sighs> it's gonna be easier to undo one of the bolts? Yep, yeah. So, we're gonna redo our plan. Um, we tried. Is this gonna fit? Um, good question. It's not working. It's not going We'll in. have to connect this before we hook that on. Okay. It goes above the skid plate. So okay. I'll hold this if you want to. What's going on, children? That's not working. Oh, wow. If you want to get the ladder and get them hooked up. That's a very big tank. Yes, allegedly this holds um, 50 gallons of fuel. Wow. Wow. I know. This is extremely inconvenient. <laughs> it's in a really awkward spot. Look, my chin's above the drive shaft. This ladder would fail. I would. <laughs> Yeah, keep going, buddy. Is that heavy? Very heavy. It's more uncomfortable, if anything. <laughs> we should just get the training jack because I'm struggling with this right now. I heard one click. I had one click on. Finally got the fuel hose, or yeah, fuel lines hooked up and electrical. So we put this where it needs to go. And we can put some straps in. Yep. Yep, it's it right there, so we gotta get it moved back. Oh, this skid plate's smashed up. So you should do auto bodies. Yeah. What are you doing? So, this skid plate, Blue Steel has seen some stuff in its day. So this kid plate's a little bent and wonky. Hey, we're in. We're in? Yep. I'm just clearancing it. Cause it'll be, once it's in place, it'll be out of the way. But 
when it's sitting here hanging, it's not. So. Okay, we got the fuel first fuel strap installed. It's not in tight because we need to get the other ones in before we tighten it up. But it's in. But it's in. So now we'll work on this next one. Heat it up from around the drive shaft. Get it. Push it to where it fits around the tank. And it's it's important that you feed the rubber in as you put it up. All right, it's time to blow tech and static. All the base coat's done. I've checked it. It's looking awesome. Then we're gonna put down some glass salts. All right, so I've got my first coat of clear down. This is gonna flash out for 12 minutes. I'll put a second coat on, bring you guys back in and show you what it looks like. All right, so I've got the clear on. It's just flashing. I'm gonna go in and check on Hillbilly and Justin, see what they're up to. I think they've almost got that new 50 gallon tank put in for Matt. Where are you at? Just getting ready to come down so we can transfer the fuel and then put the filler neck on and the vent tube on. That is a humongous fuel tank. It's gonna be a really good thing for Matt. Well, I should say a really bad thing for Matt and a really good thing for Hefe because Matt's just gonna be able to go farther and run out of fuel farther out. But Hefe's gonna have to fill this thing up less. So uh, I think it's really a win. I think it's a win too. And I don't think it's wrong. Sorry, Hefe. This is all your fault. You're the one that wanted the bigger tank. So we're gonna uh, trim the skid plate because you can see there's a little bit of mar mar marks on the new tank from the skid plate because it's all smashed up. With it being already all smashed up, time can only tell before it gets smashed up and puts a hole in the tank and then they leak all their fuel and guess what? They're out of gas. That's a bad day, so. So we're gonna trim it up so it can't do it. That should be plenty of room. Yeah, that's uh, that's nice and clearanced. So with that trimmed and uh, the tank in, what are we doing now? Gonna go down so we can transfer fuel. Heck yeah. <laughs> I like that lift. I need me one of those. Do you hear how quiet it is? Click, click. Well, that's how you know mine is going down. It's just violent. Clank, clank. Sounds like a nine millimeter going off. Yeah. Grab my transfer pump and a drill. Here we go. Time to transfer fuel. Oh, wrong direction. I was gonna say you're going the eight way. Is it coming out? Oh yeah. That doesn't slick. It's like that radiator hose on the uh, charger. Yeah. Trying to suck the tank up through. That's why it keeps collapsing. Can I just? Yeah, that's about it. There's just like a little bit left in there, but we won't get that out. Yeah, it's not even a gallon. So, yeah, we even put the fuel back in this thing. What nice guys. It's time to move this outside and put it in the bed. So it's out of our way. And look at all them parts. Yeah. Salt and blue steel. Go back inside. All we got left is the, the fuel tank, the filler and breather tube. Then that will be done and we all have to do is just the radio in the bed. You're getting there. That looky water, looky. That water or diesel. Taste it. Taste it and find nope, out. Nope, nope. I'll just take your word for it. How's it coming? It's just gotta put this on. Fuel's in it. Like a glove. 
like a glove that fits on Hillbilly's hands. Dude, well, yeah, speaking of, you know, when you guys were out my way and we worked on the 57, you know, Hillbilly left some gloves there. Stretched? And I went to go put them on. Isn't it weird? It's like, what the heck? Yeah, I'm like, these have been pre-clearance. They're actually really comfortable. (laughs) Cool. Well, I've got the hood and the fender cleared, so let's go take a look at that. Hillbilly's buttoning this up. That's all all we're doing tonight. We're going to go home for a change, and then we're going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to get the front end all assembled. It's just so amazing to me. It's wild that, you know, just a couple hours ago, we were sanding this stuff, you know, masking it off, and now it's nice and shiny and blue and the right color, and it's almost like you guys know what you're doing. We have to get out of this booth. Looks like Lincoln's still on the camera. Okay, hold it straight up, bud, like like this. We're gonna let this dry out. We're gonna let this dry out, and we'll be back tomorrow to put it all together, so it is tomorrow. It is the next day, so we're gonna be getting Blue Steel put all back together today and getting our repair, well, not getting our repairs done, but getting the collision repairs done. So we still have a few more things to do. We've got the bed that's getting powder coated. So once that gets back, we'll get the rest of the truck finished up. But today, we're gonna be foaming in the thingy inside the fender, putting the fender on hood and front end. And we've got our buddy Justin from Summit Racing here. So he's gonna be helping us do it and learning a few tips and tricks about collision repair. I am so excited to learn about body work. You know, this is not my forte. And um, you know, we're having a lot of fun. So yeah. he's gonna yeah. learn how to he's gonna learn how to put bolts back in stuff. Yes, perfect, so, perfect. Anyway, let's go to the booth. We'll grab the stuff we need and let's get this all put back together. All right, this is fully cured out. We'll get all our masking taken off. Pop these squirters in. And me and Hillbilly will go install this hood. Um, we are going to polish the truck because we're going to be putting Avalon King's um, ceramic coating on it. So we're going to let it sit until the bed gets here, and then we'll take care of that stuff. But squirters installed. Just kidding. Not quite yet. Oh, <laughs> you're going to like that. It broke. I touched it, and it broke. So we'll be getting a new squirter. I got some. Do you really a Ford one? I, have a couple, I got a couple Ford ones. Oh, good. Hillbilly's got a new squirter. I was afraid of that. Remember the other day in the last video, and I was like, oh yeah, you gotta be really careful or you'll break them. We don't wanna break the squirters, but nine times out of 10, these squirters do break. These squirters do break. These squirters do break. Well, I broke it. What had happened was? I didn't even touch it though, that's the bad thing. But the nice thing is, is at least it broke right now, and it didn't break when it went back to Matt. So, we'll get a new one. We'll get a new one installed. Yeah, see that? I barely touched it, and that squirter end just fell off. So It just left the chat. Yeah, left the chat room. Um, fender's good to go. We'll probably have Justin carry that. Do not scratch it. And, do, and don't touch the face of it. Perfect. And then, where this hood was just an R and I, which means remove and install. We'll just line these bolts back up because it wasn't a replacement and it should go back into the same spot. All right, so I've got the hood all tightened up. I'm just gonna snug it down with a wrench and then Billy's going to grab some foam. We'll get that fender foamed. And then we've got 40 seconds work time to get that fender done. Foam sets up in 40 seconds. Well, sorry, it starts to harden in 40 seconds. So we have 40 seconds to move it around. So we'll get it all in position, get it ready. Then we'll slam it on. Look how nice and shiny. Lined right back up. It looks super good. As you can see, the rest of the truck is a little dirty and a little dull, but once we do some polishing, and some ceramic coating. It's gonna look really good. But I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good about this. First things first, I like to lay out all my bolts. I like to size them up, see what I got working with, and I lay them out in the position they need to go in. So I've got my top bolts here. I've got my big ones. I got my little ones. I've got my lower ones and my upper ones. So what we've decided is we're gonna actually put the foam in after we install the fender. So we'll go ahead and just kinda They suggested it, trim off a little bit of the foam to where we can get into it. We'll actually use the old foam to connect the new foam. Ford likes to use 
flexible non-rigid foam on these. And it glues it, and then it allows for it to move a little bit over time. But does it also do sound deadening? Uh, probably. And I'm, I'm no engineer, but probably. So that's gonna work. Um, Hillbilly, I'm gonna grab the fender, but we've gotta be able to get that. I'm gonna need you to come in with the super hands and lift that up so I can get the fender up in there. So you have to like tickle your head underneath things, push that in, slide this in, force that. Give me your flatty. We need to find yours. It's somewhere in this, in these walls. It's inside these four walls somewhere. Or is it at your house? Forgot that you had it in your shirt, took your shirt off and that's floating around your room. It could absolutely be that. Could. I want to kind of reposition it where it was when we took it off. That's a good starting point. Now it looks like that is pretty well in place. Slowly lower that down, let go. Now we've got to open up the door. We'll get that bolt started. We'll get that bolt, that bolt, that bolt. All right, so I'm going to take a second and I'm going to hard mount this fender. I'm going to get my gap correct. All right, so I'm going to start at the bottom and get my lower gap where I need it. So Ford, Ford uses shims from the factory, which is absolutely mind blowing to me, but I've got them back in because I remember they went on the front side. All right, so now I'm going to work my middle and I'm going to pull the center out and I'm going to work my way up and get my gap set on this fender. So I'm following the flushness of the door, keeping my gap consistent. Okay. Make sure you gap things correctly. So how come you didn't put it in the same spot that it was before? Because those they have J-clips behind and the J-clips can move. Oh, so it's, okay. It's, yeah, those are not rigid mount holes. Okay, open that door, give me that bolt. So what I've got now is inside this door jam, we have one bolt. Open Cheshire me. Good. Now, like I told you guys on the last video, Ford likes to put 11 millimeters, 5.5 millimeters. That looks like it's about an eight. And then we've got another couple bolts up here in the front. They're eights as well. Thank you, Ford. We're always using different size stuff on the same assembly. Ford likes to use tons of different sizes. They used four different size bolts for one fender installation, which is insanity to me. Dodge uses a couple too. I don't know if Dodge is as bad as Ford when it comes to different size bolts. They have the bigger bolts for the battery box on Dodge. Ford takes the cake. Ford is the wiener. She's tight back there. Let's shut this. I'm gonna try to bring this out just a hair now that I'm looking at it. So what I'll do is I'll just loosen the center bolt. Oh, I've gotta loosen the bottom too because now the top is tight. I have a real problem with gaps. Not a problem getting them, just a problem with wanting to always redo them. Now the flushness is better. So one, you gotta make sure that even if you think you've got your gap set, sometimes you gotta go back and redo them. Let's grab that door and make sure it opens, Steve. Perfect. All right, shut it. Okay, that is gapped. Now we'll get this top all figured out. We'll get these, I'll get these snug down so they're out of the way. And then I'll tighten these up a little bit. We'll shut the hood. We'll make sure it's lined up. Then I'll crank those down. And then after that, we're gonna get this thing foamed. Okay, let's shut this and check it out. All right, so these gaps look the exact same side to side. So I'm gonna tighten those bolts down and we're gonna be good. All right, that is tight. Oh, another thing Hillbilly just showed me. He just went to the parts room. So we actually ordered new parts. We ordered a new hood and a new fender for this job. But, like we said, what would be the point of just changing parts? 
we want to show you guys how to fix them. How to sh fix them well. But we've got this chrome cover to finish off this mirror. So your OEM manufacturers, they like to sell you mirrors without the chrome piece. So now that mirror's done. So thanks Ford. Thanks for selling us a really, really expensive mirror, but no chrome for the mirror. So that we have to buy it separate. Which it's, it's fine. What is that? You want one of my oh gloves? Gosh. No. Justin went and found us a whole slew of gloves. So now I have one large glove and one XL glove. So that's great. We are going to get all set up to foam this bad boy. Gotta go all the way to the top. So we are using 3M's flexible foam. So I challenge anybody that's had your Ford vehicle repaired at a shop, and you know you've got a fender changed, go out and look. See if they refoamed it or if they just put the fender on without foam. I'll bet you there's some of you out there that the shops did not redo your foam. Isn't there some bedsides that you foam too? Uh, yeah, lots of stuff uses foam. Okay, I'm all the way up inside, and we are engaging foam. And we're pumping it in, and a little bit of foam goes a long ways because it expands out. So, as you're foaming, remember that. And I'm just kind of working the foam into the slot that I need it to foam. So I'm moving it back and forth, and I'm working the foam in. Does what it's told. All right, now that is foamed. So as you can see, it's gonna sit there and it's gonna, it's gonna extend out. That's gonna cure up and do exactly what we want it to. It's gonna protect it, it's gonna seal it, and it's gonna have flexibility so that if this thing needs to move at all, it can. Ah oh, man, that's hot. So as foam dries, it's chemically curing. So it gets real warm. There's like two and a half inches at the top that I don't think I quite got. So I'll hurry and, this is why you double check your work. I'll hurry and pump a little bit of foam all the way up in this cavity up here, and then we'll move on. And then Hillbilly's gonna work on the splash shield and the fender emblem. I'm gonna be working on the grill and the light and blue steel's gonna be put back together. So we're trying to get this done. We're gonna be taking off and headed to Reno for a couple of days in the 57 Chevy with Justin from Summit Racing. So we wanna get this done to where when we get back, the bed will be ready and we'll get this thing assembled and get it done and back to Matt. First things first, emblem. And the reason Robbie had me put this on is so that way it can't get put on crooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I put them all on crooked. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find the videos where you did all the crooked emblems. You won't find videos because it wasn't me. Well, that's true because he didn't. It didn't get filmed when we did Tucker's Forerunner. I'll have you jump in. We'll just check all the lights. So it's always after the light is installed that you decide to check it. So before you tighten down your bolts, just check your lights. Make sure they're all on. You got blinkers, headlights, brights, marker lights, running lights, and low beams. Yeah, because there's been more times than not that we've been putting it all back together and didn't realize one of the wires was cut or. All right, turn your key on. Okay, high beams. Okay, right blinker. Okay, left blinker, perfect. All right, we got our, got our marker, our blinker, our headlights high and low, so we're good. What about fogs? Fogs are gone. I'm just getting the bolts installed for the splash shield. All right, so on these lights, I wanna make sure that we get it in the right position. So I'm checking my gaps. I'm getting things tight as I go. All right, that headlight's installed. Now you can see the fender. You can't even tell it was damaged. All right, so I'm just helping Hillbilly, because I took the splash shield out. There's so, two bolts I couldn't. There's two bolts up here. He wasn't quite sure, but I remember where they went. I don't know why I have gloves on. Got three, three more bolts to be exact, and then the splash shield will be done. All right, 
Final step. On these Ford grills, they've got these lower clips, just like that. You pop them all in. Now I've got some 10 millimeters up top. Now these tops, they're fully adjustable. So what we'll want to do is we'll snug them down, we'll shut the hood, and then I'll push the hood where it needs to go. See how far it can go in and out? So everything needs adjust, everything needs adjusted properly. So I like to run these down snug, and then I'll back them off to where they're movable. Okay, it moves. Hold that. A little tight there. All right, Hillbilly, I'm gonna do this one side at a time, so pop it real quick. I'm gonna tighten this side bolt. Go up. Okay, all right, so we've got all these wires back on, lights working. The only thing we have left now is the one squirter. We're gonna order that up from Ford, and once we get that, the collision repair side of this will be done. All right, so bodywork is literally just that easy. By the click of a finger, blue steel's gonna be fixed, so. All right, so not bad for a bunch of amateurs you know, working on YouTube, but you know, we do the best we can. So I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I think Matt and the crew is gonna be happy with it. Blue Steel is gonna get all the love that it deserves because since 2016, it's been putting in all the work. So Matt's very deserving of the dents being repaired. We're gonna polish it, we're gonna do all that stuff. Um, it's gonna cure out for a little bit longer before we do any polishing, so that's probably gonna be in the next video. We're gonna pull it outside and just see how good she looks outside. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. What do you guys think? It looks good. It's nice and shiny, and like I said, it's it's amazing to see how you can kind of just fit it all together and make it all fit together like one beautiful puzzle. Like a like a work truck should be. Exactly. What do you think, Hillbilly, you happy with our work? When am I not? It's true. You're so good. We've got the collision side of it done. That's all we got for today. So, as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.